incredible 40 kilometer shoreline. A capacity to handle 200 million tons of cargo every year. Fully mechanized all weather harbors. A thousand people working 24-7, 365 days a year. A motor vessel, Kota Genten, Kota Genten, Mundra Port Control. This is Mundra, India's biggest multi-cargo port in action. With completely mechanized unloaders, high-speed conveyor systems, and the port's own private 70-kilometer railway line, Mundra discharges cargo at record speed. This is where man and machine get together to face some of the most gigantic ships that sail across the oceans. Whenever large vessels are calling, it always sets your heartbeat faster. Where almost every second has monster cranes sinking their teeth into metal and steel. 40 per hour. And every move competes with time and tide. 24 hours, I'm standby right there. And right now, Mundra Port is gearing up for a day like no other. The biggest private port in the country to handle a record amount of cargo is getting ready for its next mega mission. Four colossal mega ships carrying billions of dollars worth of cargo from across the globe are making their way to Mundra, all in the next 24 hours. These giant creatures can give the top ports in the world sleepless nights. Maneuvering their giant hulls into safe harbor is not a task for the faint-hearted. And Mundra will need to bring out its toughest workforce and meanest warriors to tame these mighty sea monsters. Good morning, uh, this is Mundra Port. Uh, your pilot boarding time is confirmed. Now 1140. At the Marine Control Center, all nerves are on edge. This is where every inch of movement of the four ships is being tracked with a hawk's eye. Movement for you, 1140. With stakes this high, there is absolutely no margin for error. Sir, your displacement force. Like air traffic control in airports, the marine port control navigates all the ships arriving and departing from the port. Depending on their cargo and position in the queue, vessels are assigned their parking spot at Mundra's 24 different berths. And today, the Marine Control Center has to be on their toes to make sure that the four megaships make their passage safely. So while four large ships coming in, at the different tides in the different conditions, different commodities, at different berths, it is challenging. Challenging from the perspective of weather condition, managing the tides and currents, making sure that each ship is not waiting outside. The biggest issue is about the safety, because these large ships, you just don't want them to touch each other. India has a coastline of over 8,000 kilometers with nearly 200 ports, out of which 13 are major ports, which handle nearly 75% of the total cargo traffic. But Mundra is one of the few ports in the country which can accommodate ultra-large vessels because of its deep waters. Most of the Indian ports have shallow waters. Most of the ports we are talking of 9 meters, 10 meters, 10 and a half meters, 11 meters. Whereas in Mundra port, when we say what water depth we have available is minimum 18 and a half meters. What is the advantage that this depth has is you can actually get in the biggest of the ships 
which are flying the international waters, they can come into Mundra port today. Even the ships which are there on the drawing board, Mundra port has designed its capacities to handle those ships. Mundra is perched strategically on the Gulf of Kutch, one of India's busiest trading points, and it sees some of the biggest ships coming in from across the world, especially the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. 95% of India's merchandise trade by volume is managed by Indian ports, and Mundra has become an important economic hub. In 2013 and 14, Mundra surpassed all commercial ports in India by handling an astonishing 100 million metric tons of mega cargo. Historically, global trading has always been done by sea, and some of the biggest cities in the world have thriving ports, like New York, London, Istanbul, Dubai, and Mumbai. A young port like Mundra isn't locked in by a city yet and can expand rapidly in terms of infrastructure. It also has the country's biggest port-based operational special economic zone of over 6,000 hectares. Mundra is currently one of the fastest growing ports in the world. In the last 10 years, it has become the country's largest multi-cargo port. We handle crude oil, chemicals, containers, coal, and every commodity possible at Mundra. For a mega port handling thousands of tons of different cargo a day, the sooner it can get the cargo out of the port and to its final destination, the better. The port design should be such, it should be like an inverted funnel. The ships coming in should be on the narrower part and the evacuation of the cargo should be on the broader part of the funnel. And that is one of the unique features that Mundra has, that we have taken care of the evacuation capacity that is there and we have ensured that we will not run into a bottleneck. Nowhere is this better seen than at the mechanized fertilizer cargo complex, which has a total capacity of 500,000 metric tons. Around 10 rakes are loaded on a daily basis, which can send off nearly 40,000 metric tons of fertilizer a day. The port has mega storage space with more than 200,000 square meters of covered storage go-downs and 97 tanks for storage of liquid cargo, having the capacity of more than 400,000 kiloliters. Back at the Marine Control Center, tensions are riding high. The first of the mega ships, a mighty vehicle carrier, the Durban Highway, has just entered the outer waters of Mundra. The marine traffic planner will ensure that the arrangements are complete in all respects to ensure that the four mega ships are safely moored. I have two plus one tied, sir. The most difficult part of the job of a marine control officer is that he is at all point of time. Uh, in charge of a live situation. His actions will dictate the present and will arrive to some futuristic actions. Any, I repeat, any single mistake in planning, in uh, execution, will result in an accident. Accident is a dirty word in the marine business. And to help keep catastrophes at bay, Mundra has a fleet of the most powerful tugboats in the country. These tugboats will play a crucial role in maneuvering the four megaships in. It's the tugs which help safely berth a vessel. A ship takes a long time to turn or stop on its own. So if she needs to be brought to a specific position or range, it is done with the help of tugs. For unberthing, tugs pull a ship out of the jetty without her being damaged. Don't be fooled by their size. They may seem like babies compared to the mothership, but put two or three of them together and they have enough steam to pull, push, and maneuver the largest vessels in the world. Each tug of 6,000 brake horsepower is capable of handling ships more than 100 times its size and 200 times its weight. I can say the advantage of our tugs are their high reliability because the pilot does not want the tug to fail uh, during a maneuver. The stakes involved are very high for the vessel 
for the port and for the environment as such also. Come hell or high water, these ferocious war horses are always raring to go when the call comes from the Marine Control Center. And right now, they are headed towards the first of the mega ships coming in, the mega vehicle carrier, Durban Highway. Durban Highway is so deep that she could well be a 15-story building floating into the port, and she's coming in to be loaded with 2,000 cars. To get Durban Highway in, one of Mundra's most experienced pilots gets into action. Water vessel Durban Highway, Durban Highway, Mundra pilot. Two tugs will assist you for this maneuver. They have to be made fast on the port. The pilots at Mundra are some of the most experienced in the business, and they work with sophisticated, high-tech devices when piloting a ship. We carry this tablet with us which is uh, equipped uh, with a GPS inbuilt. This device serves as an excellent portable navigational tool to the pilot because he has all the navigational charts fed into this and with the inbuilt GPS that it has, a pilot is able to see the vessel position precisely to five meter accuracy. I can, at a single click, see what are the depths presently under my ship and also where I am going to. And this avoids grounding of vessels, which otherwise happens in other ways. Once on board Durban Highway, the first thing on the agenda is to help the captain of the ship get familiar with the procedures and channels of Mundra. A run through of the different tide and water conditions, and the ship is ready to be docked or berth. And we will be going in straight in between the boys and turning you to starboard in the turning basin. Vehicle carriers are tricky ships to handle. They have colossal box-like structures which are vulnerable to drift out of control because of the huge area exposed to the wind. And they come with another challenge. There is a variation in the current, so the pilot has to be very careful in knowing that actually what is the uh, current scenario now. From a larger current area, we are entering into an area of a cross current followed by a little slacker area. When a vehicle carrier enters the port, it has the ramp to load the vehicles on its right. It needs to be completely turned 180 degrees so that the ramp is on its left. This allows the ramp to be lowered onto a pontoon, which allows the vehicles to be transported to the vessel. Three, three, five. Three, three, five. Yeah. We'll turn right in the basin here. The basin is 700 meters wide, so we'll turn up here. And after that, we'll start backing her down towards the last berth there. What will make turning the Durban Highway even tougher is the fact that this mega ship is built in a way that 80% of its body lies behind where the captain and pilot are positioned. That means they are virtually turning the ship without being able to see what is behind. Exactly where we were when we entered and we stopped the ship here, we turned it around 180 degrees and now the ends have reversed and now we have started going, taking the ship back. We have to go nearly two kilometers aft to go and berth her to the car carrier berth. Meanwhile, a highly specialized team is headed out into the Gulf of Kutch to perform a crucial job. They need to dive to 100 feet below the surface of the water to carry out a subsea safety check that is critical for the berthing of the second of the megaships, the massive oil tanker, Bunga Kasturi Lima. When very large crude carriers, or VLCCs, carrying oil come calling to Mundra, they require such deep waters that they are moored at sea in what is known as offshore berthing. Mundra has two single point moorings, or buoys, which are about two miles apart. And it is to these buoys that the giant tankers are moored. One end of the rubber hose is attached to the ship from where oil will gush out. And the other end takes the shape of a Chinese lantern nearly 100 feet below the water and is connected to a nine kilometer concrete pipeline which emerges on the shore. So it is crucial to inspect the hoses below the water to ensure that there is no leakage or fault anywhere. But the pressure is building. The Bunga Kostori Lima is arriving an hour before its scheduled time. 
there is only one hour of slack water window in which the inspection can be done. The divers will have to push their limits to complete the check in record time. If you having any sort of problem underwater, straight away come out. Need not to wait there. Back at the Marine Control Center, the news is that the Bunga Kasturi Lima is already on the horizon. While the first of the megaships, the mighty vehicle carrier Durban Highway, has taken the heart-stopping turn successfully and is now being backed into position, the diving team is ready to take the plunge for the subsea inspection. But things are not looking easy. The divers need to go deep below the surface and check that the hoses are in good condition to ensure that there are no leaks. The high-tech video recording system sent down with the divers has confirmed the worst suspicion. Yes, yeah, can you tell me the visibility over there? How is visibility? Less than one foot. Less than one feet. The divers have to resort to manual inspection. Inch by inch, they feel the joints. Years of experience have taught them to detect even a minor fault. And now all their senses will be tested to the limit. Yeah, diver's surface. Okay, yeah, you have checked that planes, the uh, acid bolt? Yeah, yeah, okay, then uh, you start coming up slowly. The divers are old hands at the job, and they manage to complete the inspection in good time. Thirty-five minutes later, the coast is clear, just in time for the Bunga Kasturi Lima. More than 1,200 feet long and 180 feet wide, she has sailed over some of the roughest oceans, carrying more than 200,000 metric tons of crude oil, enough to fill more than 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools. While she inches forward, an entire battalion of people wait to orchestrate this docking. The pilot is on standby to mount her. Nearly nine different teams need to work in sync to get her to dock. Control, go ahead, sir. Yeah, we can approach, we can approach. There is a pilot on board, there is a mooring master on board who is looking after the operation from forward part. Pilot will guide us, and we have a team with us. Mooring master is stationed in the forward part, reporting to the pilot on the distances from the SPM, what are the preparations going on on the forward. He is basically the eye of the pilot. The entire maneuver needs to be completed in two hours. If it's not, the high tide will change to low, the direction of the water will change, and the entire operation will have to be aborted and retried. In the water, the divers wait closer to the buoy to connect the rubber hoses that will be used to transfer the oil to the ship. It's one of the toughest jobs around. As she draws closer to the buoy, the tension mounts. This is a high precision maneuver and the scope of error is zero. Bunga Story Lima needs to come exactly 45 meters from the buoy and be stopped. To go any closer could have disastrous consequences. If she crashes into the buoy, it could not only damage infrastructure worth millions of rupees, 
it could cause a massive oil spill. You are discharging oil at about 10,000 cubics per hour. Two minutes of spill can give out about 200 cubics of oil. Gulf of Kutch is a inland waters. If there is an oil spill of about 200 cubics, it will spread an area of about 30 kilometers square within 15, 20 minutes. So there can be no mistakes in judgment and no lapses in safety. She will travel at the speed of 0.6 kilometers per hour, moving slowly towards the buoy. The Bunga Kasturi Lima slowly comes to a halt at the single point mooring, and it's time for her to discharge her cargo. A huge crane is lowered into the water, after which the divers then hook the end of the rubber hose to the crane. Usually, three rubber hoses of each string are pulled up, which collectively weigh close to 18,000 kilograms, the weight of three African elephants. Once the hoses are taken onto the deck and the valves are opened, the oil is discharged at high speed. Within 48 hours, the entire cargo needs to be discharged so that the Bunga Kasturi Lima can set sail again. In another part of the port, the mega vehicle carrier Durban Highway is backing up into its position at the pontoon. Backing this mega ship is no small feat. Unlike other ships, which are parked nearly 35 meters from each other, parallel to the jetty, here the pilot has to back her up and bring her to a dead stop exactly seven meters short of the floating pontoon, without being able to see what's behind him. It's like reversing a long trailer into a blind alley and stopping before it crashes into the dead end. Dolphin 8 increased to half. The pilot has to depend solely on the person on the jetty to guide him, as he is unable to see what's behind him. The floating pontoon, a one of its kind in South Asia, is unique to Mundra and is the answer to a problematic situation. We have a tidal range of about six and a half meters. Now, because of the tidal range, the stern ramp practically at low tide goes below the deck level and therefore you used to have a blackout of about 10 hours and that is definitely undesirable. So what we have designed, we have designed a floating pontoon with a link span which is supported on two spuds so with the tide it keeps on rising, it keeps on falling and the ramp is actually resting on the Roro pontoon so therefore there is absolutely no blackout. So the cars can be loaded 24 by 7 and therefore the 10 hour blackout is gone. India's car export business has been booming, and Mundra Port has exported nearly 450,000 cars in the past five years. That's nearly 100,000 cars a year. Now, nearly 2,000 cars are parked in the yard and waiting to be loaded onto the Durban Highway to be exported. These cars have been driven meticulously from the stocking yard by car jockeys, who are specifically trained to drive these cars. As the sun sets on the Mundra waters, the long day fades into night and the challenge continues. Close to the jetty, the cars are given a thorough wash before they can be loaded. 14 seconds a car, and it drives out in immaculate condition. When we talk about other ports and this port, the distance between the clean car and the vessel is hardly 100 meters. So that gives us our advantage of having sending clean cars from here. The race against time begins as soon as the cars are driven into the ship. Nearly 150 cars need to be parked per hour, and not a second is wasted. Parking the cars is a highly choreographed movement between the car jockeys who drive the cars to the ship and hand them to a specialized team of parkers. 
Getting the cars into precise parking position requires the highest level of accuracy. They need to be parked 30 centimeters apart, bumper to bumper. The distance between the mirrors is as little as 10 centimeters. All this without any markers, so it becomes doubly tough. The signalmen play a crucial job in helping the parkers get into position, and they have their own unique way of judging distances. Unlike these cars being loaded into the Durban Highway, sometimes there may be different models of cars being parked behind each other, so it requires judgment and precision. Any extra space left in the beginning can have disastrous space constraints for the cars parked later. Once parked, it's all about securing the cars safely. If the cars aren't secured properly, then they can roll with the ship's movement, turn turtle, damage the entire deck, or even catch fire. As night falls, man and machine continue their tryst with ships at Mundra port. But the 24-hour challenge is still not over. Even before the other two mega ships come in, the port still has a few battles to fight. At the Marine Control Center, tension creeps in. A large fertilizer ship, which was supposed to come in earlier in the day, has arrived nearly six hours late and has to be docked in one of the trickiest berths of the port in the dark. Motor vessel, motor vessel talent, Mundra Port Control. The ship is very heavy. It's coming with the fertilizers, a lot of cargo in it. It's a deep draft vessel. It's pitch dark outside. There are a lot of fishing boats. Pilot has to use his judgment, his past experience to get the ship alongside. He has to board it right at time at 2005 hours. Within 40 minutes, he has to come inside and get it alongside because of the tidal reasons. And this all has to be done in the pitch dark. The night is proceeding at a frenetic pace. More than 500 cars have been loaded onto the Durban Highway, but nearly 1,500 are still left. The drivers need to step on the pedal to meet the deadline. If the fully loaded fertilizer ship that has come in misses the tidal window, she would throw the entire schedule out of gear. Her next permissible slot for berthing would interfere with the mega container ship slated to come into the port in the morning. To handle this live wire situation, the pilot has stepped out to take charge. There's already a vessel out there. We don't have much clearance here. We have got that clear and we have got cross times, very strong cross currents. And night time, that is minus point again. So we have to concentrate a little bit more. Berth number eight, where the ship is headed, is a tricky waterway to negotiate. The pilot has to keep at the center of this extremely narrow channel. If he drifts too much to the left, he'll face shallow waters and could run aground. Too much to the right, and he'll collide with another ship already berthed. So he has to come straight, stop before where the tugs are berthed, and then, with the help of the tugs, park it at the berth. With less than 30 minutes before the tide changes, there's even more pressure for the pilot to bring the ship in as soon as possible. This is a little critical moment. Yeah. And uh, make sure your both anchors are ready for emergency only. This is our ship, this center one. And uh, these are small are fishing boats or small boats. These are big vessels, these are the reflections. This is the jetty, this is South Pacer. It's a complicated maneuver. At night, no shore structure is visible, only the spotlights. The water is pitch black and it's difficult to judge distances. In the day, when the jetty is visible, it's easier to make out whether it's 100 meters away or 500. But at night, 
the pilot has to rely completely on his sense of orientation. What makes it even more complicated is the narrow width of the navigable waters through which the pilot has to steer the ship. Current is pushing your ship around three knots like this. So you can't come at a very high speed. It's not a car, you can't apply brakes. You will run, run aground forward. So you have to have a perfect speed to make an approach. The fertilizer ship finally makes it in its stipulated time and no longer interferes with the berthing of the megaships. But bringing in the ship is not the end of the road for the port. The fertilizers are now scooped up by giant grabs and filled into funnel-like structures called hoppers so that there is no wastage. Nearly 50 trucks are queued up to take the fertilizer from the ship to the fertilizer cargo complex. And the night continues to be a hectic one for the port. As a new day dawns, the pressure continues. 12 of the 24 hours have passed and only half the challenge is over. Two megaships have made it safely into the port and their loading and unloading continues. But two more sea monsters have yet to show their faces. Until they do, the port can't afford to let its artillery down. Meanwhile, in the Marine Control Center, there is a change in the shift from night to day. This is a very crucial period in the morning where fresh operators take over from the handing over officers. For a 24-hour port, which may have vessels at various stages of operations, there can be absolutely no gap in information, especially on a day like this. The new team takes a complete brief on the tidal conditions as well as the status of the various ships in about 20 minutes before they take over. Here, nothing stops in the 24-hour operations. An electronic chart system continuously receives updates about the passage of the nearby ships, and the new team knows exactly what movement is taking place when they take over. Two mega ships, a mega container ship and a mega coal ship, are arriving simultaneously. But this is over and above the busy traffic handled by the marine control officers, and they need to be extra cautious in passing on messages for the movement of the ships. Right now, the screens are flashing the arrival of the two megaships. Her name is Zambia. At 300 meters, she is longer than four jumbo jets placed tail to tail. Among the largest to sail into India, she is fully loaded with 2,000 mega containers. And to welcome her is a fleet of tugs saluting her in. Uh, Mundra port, the ships are uh, very special and uh, this jetting of water to welcome a large ship is an expression of uh, celebration and happiness that we are trying to demonstrate to the best. Zambia has been docked and the regulatory formalities completed. And now it's time for the ground staff of the terminal to take charge of completing the unloading operations. Mundra's three container terminals work around the clock, handling containers with high-value goods. The stars of the container terminal are the 18 mega cranes, which operate by the second, continuously grabbing and unloading the 20 and 40-foot containers. These cranes, what you see here, they are the biggest crane between uh, Suez and Singapore. These cranes has got the outreach of 24 rows across. Handling these mega cranes is a tough job and needs nerves of steel. The key crane operator is the chief in command, making sure that the cranes keep on moving against all odds. He has two people to guide him. One on the jetty to line up the containers. 56, 55. Okay. 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 And one on the vessel to tell him where to place or pick the containers from. His job is gripped with challenges. Now, 
वी हैव टू कम्प्लीट इट हमें इसके लिए मिनिमम 40 कंटेनर पर आवर निकालने पड़ेंगे और लोडिंग पे इस पर 40 कंटेनर पर आवर डालने पड़ेंगे इसके लिए क्या है थोड़ा वर्क प्रेशर भी रहता है Each container needs to be unloaded from the ship in less than two minutes if the target is to be met, and the race against the clock has begun. Mundra is not only a mega port with mega infrastructure, but is also aware of its impact on the environment. is committed towards introducing environmentally friendly technologies in various departments to handle multiple cargos. And right now, the world's largest automated coal importing terminal is waiting for the mega coal carrier to cruise into its waters. She is the frontier queen. and she has sailed from Singapore to Mundra carrying 165,000 metric tons of coal. She has a loaded draft or depth of nearly 57 feet. It would take almost 42 trains on land to transport the same quantum of cargo from one point to another. This mammoth beauty is a cape-sized vessel, too colossal to pass through either the Suez or Panama Canal. Mundra has a unique feature when you say the largest coal vessel uh, in India you do not get it that often and there is a frequency of vessels coming let us say calling weekly or fortnightly or monthly to cater to the customer requirement but this place has got the unique uh, advantage of uh, getting every second vessel is a cape size vessel The coal from the Frontier Queen is being offloaded with lightning speed Mundra has seven coal-grabbing monster unloaders and some of the most experienced taskmasters taming them. Grain sickne mein jada sir jada ek sal lag jata hai aur uske baad bhi grip aane mein jitna aadmi purana rahega utna achhi grip de payega. To usko pata hai ki bhai kya kya isme challenges aati hain. Even as the cargo is being unloaded, a crucial step is in progress. A team is using a special gas detection kit to check that the coal which has arrived is in safe condition. and there is no cargo on fire in the hatch of the vessel this will allow a team to go into the coal hold to check if the cargo is being evacuated efficiently at 35 metric tons per minute it will take nearly 50 hours for all the coal of the frontier queen to be unloaded and sent to the stockyard The unloaded coal gets dropped directly onto the conveyor belt which travels at a super fast speed of 7.5 meters per second taking the coal to the stockyard from where it is transported to two power plants close to the port. Both the Adani and Tata thermal power plants which have a combined capacity of 8000 megawatts get quick access to the coal being brought in by these mammoth ships. Mundra has large yards for coal storage inside the port area. The port can store up to 4 million metric tons of coal, enough to fuel the 8000 megawatt power plant located in close vicinity for more than 40 days. For the mega container ship Zambia, the race against the clock continues. Running a port is a tough business. Millions of tons of cargo spell billions of dollars, and parking a ship at a port costs big bucks. So from the time a ship sails in, it is a race against time, both at the seaward end to ensure that she is brought in safely and loaded or unloaded and set sail again, and at the landward end, which delivers the cargo safely to the receiving parties. Eventually for any ship owner, he actually starts losing money when he comes into the port so the faster he gets his vessel to turn around from the port that is what makes him click the biggest problem with most of the indian ports is you have a lot of congestion and you have a lot of pre-berthing delays so vessels are perennially waiting outside maybe 2 days sometimes 10 days and sometimes 15 days whereas mundra the waiting is practically nil the 
mission of the megaships at Mundra has picked up pace. All four have been brought to dock, and now it's a question of unloading their cargo at the earliest so that they can set sail again. If they are delayed beyond their departure time, the port will incur huge financial losses. Meanwhile, nearly all the 2,000 containers from the Zambia have been offloaded, and the crane operator has pushed his limit to 40 moves per hour, at par with all the top international ports in the world. Any hitch anywhere could cost precious time. If the movement of the crane stops for any reason, it would take nearly half an hour to build up to the same momentum of 40 moves an hour, a break that would cause a major dent in the deadline. All the containers being unloaded from the Zambia are being taken to the yard. Every single container that is handled in the port is stacked in the sprawling 25 hectare yard in a way that its location can be easily identified with the use of state-of-the-art software. With this instrument, we are in a position to identify or record all the movement live. When you go back to the computer system, you will know this particular container was offloaded by which operator, by which crane, what time, which ship, from which location, and where is it gone. 24 challenging hours later, the port has pulled off its mega mission flawlessly. The four mighty sea monsters have all been successfully tamed. More than half the oil from the Bunga Castori Lima has been discharged, and half the coal from the Frontier Queen unloaded. The Durban Highway is all ready to set sail again, and the last few containers from the Zambia find their final place on the trailers. And even as this mega mission comes to a close, Mundra is notching up the scale of its ambition and the strength of its innovations. We have actually won a lot of awards uh, in, in innovation on, on various forums in India as well as outside. And it would start from designing the way the grab is operating for the coal cargo to very advanced IT solutions, integrated solutions, our own in-house developed solutions. So that has been a culture and that has been the spirit of this organization. Already advanced planning is in place to make it among the safest and most automated ports in the world. Over the next decade, I expect Mundra to be within the top 10 multi-cargo ports in the world. And we expect to be handling over 300 million tons of cargo every year. It is this ambition, backed by our massive investment in infrastructure, that makes Mundra a mega port. And it is with this spirit of zeal that India's largest megaport moves towards the future.